Audiobook title, Tomboyish Crush, 00-02, by Mattel A. This work belongs to author, Mattel A. Source, scribblehub.com. Prologue, Part 1. A Token of a Memory. There was a time that I always cherished, but the cause of it is not something pleasant for me when I was a kid, before going to primary school. The images are still as vivid as ever like a calm river, untouched and pure. It predates a few years ago, after getting out of the airport and walking to a car dealership. Papa closed the door and turned the car on, slouching his back on the drivers just to the right of me sitting on Mama's lap. Prince Lion, honey, are you excited for our new home Tilda? Mama said with enthusiasm, but I was feeling down and there's also the feeling that she doesn't like it either, despite always being called Prince by Mama and rarely Papa. I didn't want to say anything or more like I just can't muster up myself for it. Papa put his hand at the wheel as he sighed. Let the little girl be, Meg, she's still terrified because of the things happening around our old neighborhood. Mama caressed my head softly despite my prickly short hair. I know, Brem, but it's hard even for me, and I know it does for you too. The car now moves and both front windows are opened with the shut here going downward to make way for the wind to breeze in. I'm sorry for doing this, but I made my decision. I don't want all of us three to be saddened because we stayed longer than we necessarily have to. There were many things happening around our old neighborhood, and we moved out of Amsterdam because of it, leaving everybody I know there behind. I haven't said goodbye to my grandpa and grandma. I didn't have many friends because I don't look and act like a girl, but I like the boys' clothes more than the girls' because they're easier for me to move and feel more cool to wear. Yet I still feel like it's too cruel for me to be like this. I miss the beautiful red flowers that I always see when going to the park, and there didn't seem to be any around this place back then. Mama, where are we? Mama smiled but she didn't seem to be happy in my eyes. We are in the country of New Zealand, and we'll be living in one of the city named Wellington. I don't really understand why we didn't just move out to another city inside the country. But that thought only occurred to me after we settled in this city. Will I get to see grandma and grandpa again? Ah. Um, maybe when you're older, okay? You are still too young to go out by yourself, so don't go far when we get to a new home. New home. There isn't much to do inside the car and a smartphone is a luxury that little me doesn't get to have, so all there is for me to do is sit still and enjoy the view. Spoiler. The view of the ocean, the beach and the city of itself all in one shore is beautiful, it still is at times when I go out around town collapse, the clear blue sky and scattered clouds reminded me of the beach from back near our old home, the lush green mountain helps make the city that resides around it look harmonious, the hillside let us take the sight of the seaway down where the boats and ships are at bay, almost everything here is new for me and maybe for my parents too as they sometimes said wow and cool, so I just stared at the wonders unveiled to our eyes, the lack of things to do made my vision waver from the sleepiness and the warm heat only encouraged that, and when mama's hands patting gave me her soft caressing, I can't help but shut my eyes. Along the way I fell asleep, and it felt like only a few minutes passed yet the surroundings told me otherwise as the sun was setting down by the time the car stopped at some point. Prince Lion, honey, wake up, honey bun. Scratching my eyes, I yawned for a bit before shaking my head to ward off the sleepiness as we got out of the car. NGH, are we there yet, ma, pa? Yep. Now let's get inside and see what's inside for ourselves. Pop opened the gate in front stating for sale and we followed after him. The house we're about to enter is a two-story, and the front yard is filled with brisk grass which seemed as if they were left uncared for some time, which made me wonder if the inside isn't taken care of as well. Entering, we were greeted by the decorations on the walls to the sides, stuff like home sweet home. The living room to our left has a TV, a sofa and a table which is fitting for welcoming guests, watching football and other gatherings. The kitchen to our right holds the utensils and cooking ingredients outside, the drawers inside hold more of them, and the refrigerator holds nothing in them. The bathroom is near the back of the house where there are four other empty rooms before the staircase leading up. Three empty rooms upstairs, each having good sunlight exposure and the view of the streets from up here. It was inside the room that faces the front of our new house that I saw a boy and his mother playing cat and mouse in front of our house, and my parents seemed to notice it too. Well, Prince Lion, 
Now that we are here, let's greet some new people to be friends with. Feeling enthusiastic by nodding, I walked downstairs with my parents and we set out to greet our first neighbor. There are other kids playing jump rope on the other side of the road far from here and laughing to themselves with cheerful faces. It made me wonder if I can make more friends here than I did back home. The name Johansson is plated on the postcard before the open fence and the ground that holds soft grass is unlike ours. Papa pushed a button outside the house and there was some kind of noise inside the house right after, and who comes out of it first is an adult man with violet hair and brown eyes, slim yet muscular but him wearing an apron tells me he's a cook. Oh, howdy, how may I help you? Spoiler. Daniel Johansson. Oh, are you perhaps new around this part of town? You folk sure doesn't seem to be from around here. Collapse. Well, you see, we just moved here in the house in front, and we would like to greet everyone around here. Ah, so you're all the ones who would be staying there, huh? Nice to meet you. I'm Daniel Johansson but you can call me Danny. I hope we'll be able to get along from here on out. Thank you Danny. We hope for that too. To introduce ourselves, my name is Brema Rasen, my wife Miguel, and my daughter here Lion. Lion? A girl's name, huh? That's quite a name picked for a girl. I thought it's another boy my son gets to be friends with, but a girl's fine too for once. So, are you the little girl lion? Papa let his hands guide me to introduce myself to the man before me, yet despite being eager some minutes ago, I am now shaking my body, because of the things that my grandma said for adult men who are good looking is that they may hurt you in the long run. But that turns out to be her way of activating my fight or flight mode to make sure I take care with older guys, especially with the many cases revolving around them back in my old house. H H hi. My uh, name is Lion Arson. GG go demorgen. I hid behind Papa's back soon after, not being able to shake off the shyness in me because of mistaking the time of the day still in the morning. Ahaha, ah, ah, sorry about that. Kid didn't get to say goodbye to everyone back home in Amsterdam. Oh, is that so? I think I can get her to be friends with my boy Dennis. Joanna, dear, can you come here? We got our new neighbor out front. Okay, Danny sweetheart, in a moment a woman can be heard from the back of their house, and then comes out an adult woman with long dark blue hair and blue eyes, wearing a gardening hat and a blue overalls while brushing off her sweat. Spoiler. Hannah Joanna Johansson, ah, uh, I apologize for looking a bit raidy with this clothes, it's autumn and I was just cleaning our backyard with my little boy collapse, oh, sorry to meet you while I'm dirty like this, I'm Hannah Johansson, but people around here often call me Joanna, I hope we'll be good neighbors from now on, and soon after, I see a little boy the same age as me with a red leaf stuck on his blue hair and brown eyes, pouting his mouth and it seems he just realized the leaf and blows it away with only his mouth, and smiling from just that. Unconsciously I giggled a little, and his eyes wandered over here but I was quick enough to hide myself behind Papa's back. Spoiler. Uck. He's looking at me. How am I going to talk to him now that I'm a little calmer? I thought to myself, not knowing how to greet and befriend him now that I'm back to being shy and shaky. Collapse. This is the first encounter I had with the boy in front of our house, and the many days to come accompanied by our two families bonding. Dot. Zero. Prologue. Part. Two. End. A keepsake of a memory. Red leaves were falling at the time when I was helping my mother to clean the garden in the back of our house in the afternoon. Joanna, dear, can you come here? We got our new neighbor out front. Okay, Danny sweetheart, in a moment, mom shouted as she walked inside the house. Now, Dennis, let's go meet your new neighbors together, honey. To which I nod and put the broom near the back door. That reminded me, the house that was directly facing ours across the street has been empty for months, and it seems the dad is talking with the new people who will be living there from today. After washing my hands, I reached the front door where both mom and dad were laughing out loud. I felt that something was off like my head's a little noisy, scratching my hair. Turns out there's a red leaf stuck probably from the backyard. Flicking it away as it flies off to the trash bin near the door made me feel lucky and my lips lifted with a feeling of accomplishment. PFFT. I heard a snicker from the direction of the new people, but it doesn't seem like that's a thing any of these adult people will do. Ah. Speaking of young children, let me introduce you to mine. I tilt my head as dad guides me to a pair of brightly colored hair pairs, 
It took me a couple of seconds before responding as I recollected myself for the introduction. Hello, my name is Dennis Johansson. What's yours? Good sir and mistress. Oh, you're a good, disciplined kid, aren't you, little Dennis? You can call me Uncle Bremer. The warm face put on by the plump yet masculine uncle with ponytail blonde hair and blue eyes did pass away my tension a bit, as he pats me on the head, which I do not mind for the most part. Spoiler. Bremer Arson, you're sweaty just like your mother, kid. Good for you to be helping your parents this early on. Collapse. Cute and handsome at it, too. Just like his father and mother. You can call me Auntie Miguel or Meg. Little sweetie. The woman with the short ginger-colored bob hair and brown eyes gave a good compliment to not just me, but all of us in the Johansson family. Spoiler. Miguel Arson. Ahaha, I'm sorry that Uncle Brem is too eager to see such a friendly neighbor close to us. Collapse. From that remark, I felt my lips going up for a bit. Do I? I muttered to myself, and seeing my parents having their cheeks lifted, I puff my chest and my hands to my sides. I do. Yeah, they laughed at me, but I didn't mind it that much as a kid. Besides, who wouldn't feel proud to be an adorned kid around your neighbors? It was then that I noticed the side of his shirt is pulled from his back, and the thing is, his wife is beside him a little far, so I was wondering who is behind him. And as I walked to his back, I noticed a ginger-colored hair and blue-eyed kid there, hiding from me who's trying to talk to him. You. Hi. His father, Uncle Bremer, gave her a little push away from him. M. My name is L. Lion Arson, GG Go. More dot Jen. Her stuttering and low voice can only confuse me so much, and I can't think much of what she said just now. Ah. Uh, Gordon Morgan? Narrowing her eyes at me with quite an intense stare, she walked and pointed to me. No, you. It's. She covered her mouth and seems like she somehow messes up something right now. Artilda. Matilda. A girly voice comes out, and I was a bit stunted back then, thinking that it's cute for her to be high-pitched after the inaudible voices she let out just now. Are? What's wrong, my precious warrior? Auntie Miguel carries her onto her shoulder. I wanna go home, but we have a new home here now, sweetie. Don't like it, everyone's new and scary, but Dennis here isn't scary, right? Say hello to him. Auntie Miguel winked at me and I didn't understand what a wink was supposed to mean back then, so I just nodded, don't wanna, he's weak. I, who heard this even if slightly, gave a silent contempt and my next choice of words which would reflect this, walking to face her on the side, smirking and covering my mouth giggling, but you're the scared one, not me, so that makes you weak. As the adults are talking, we two are having a staring contest with each other for a few seconds. Ma, can you put me down? I want to play with him, she said, glaring at me ugly. I walk backward while still facing her with my back near the front door. Mom, can I go to the backyard and clean again? Sure, hun. Mom gave me a good opportunity to escape from this new lion kid. If you bring lion with you. All of the adults are grinning and laughing. But I felt betrayed by her and ridiculed for trying to ask for help back then. Them saying cute and adorable, while I'm here quietly muttering crap. My relief turned to despair as I turned to look at her putting on a slasher's smile, and could only gulp for what was to come, bye bye, oh no, you don't, she ran up to me as I barely evaded her hands and went full speed to the back which had some spots where I might be able to hide and outrun her by, getting out the back, I spotted the stacks of leaves all around, and the rugged breathing of the one behind me chasing me, got you now, with a sound of poof, I made a mess with the leaves now scattered again, and there's Lion on top of me with her face still mad and red. So, who's weak now, eh? Spoiler. Lion Arson. Hello? Are you so scared you're playing dead with me now? Collapse. Don't know why, but I kept on staring at her, and she was getting more red with each passing second. And gh, say something, will ya? I realized that something was mesmerizing about her blue eyes, like the color at the sea in the deep. I think that's when my heart thumped irregularly. An attraction to someone else, feeling like I wanted to be with her for however long my heart asked for. Didn't exactly have the courage to say anything with the stare, but I laughed it off. What's so funny? Maybe it was then that I got to be so close to a kid my age, and I'm eager to know that each day we'll be meeting each other on the next street. Not funny, but it's fun. You're not mad or scared at me? She meekly said while looking away from my eyes. 
Perhaps, what I said wasn't exactly appropriate, but it's the only thought I had to tell her about. Nah, I like you, you're fun. She looks down for a while and her ears are eminently bright red, and a cheerful smile comes out from that after. Yeah, me too. I like you too. We both laughed for a while before mom caught up to us and made us clean both the backyard and our bodies accompanied by both mom and auntie Miguel. I don't exactly know why they moved here, but I do know that made her sad, and I unconsciously promised myself to not sadden anyone I know of. Especially her. Zero. Chapter 1, Part 1, Oh yes, the day's today. Buzz. The phone sets off the alarm singing the song Fireflies by Owl City. Displaying the time 06.30 am. NGGH tilde. The person in bed doesn't feel like it. But the buzzing noises won't stop. Uck, where is it? Managing to turn off the alarm while yawning, she recollects herself within a minute while wondering about something. That day, huh. Next to come is to fill up the room with sunlight and the air of the morning. Opening each of the windows nearby, making the bed, and stretching to get yourself feeling refreshed even if just for a while. From the second floor, the sun is barely up on the horizon, with its light touching buildings far from here. The sights of the people walking by at the time are few, as they wave their hands to our protagonist. R. Lion. Good morning to you, little girl. Spoiler. Hannah Joanna Johansson. You look like an orange snowball. Lion girl. Better wash up your hair. Collapse. Morning to you too, Auntie Joanna. Both exchange their greetings, seeing as they are neighbors from the neighborhood, taking in the view of the mountains afar and the birds tweeting, alongside the breezing wind, refreshes the body and the mind for the day. Phew. The day's today, she said as she walked towards the calendar marked in red circles, Saturday marked crush the heart. Face heating up and mind in a daze for her reasons. Our girl in question here is feeling quite energetic about her plan. T time to wash myself. Getting out of the room, she jogs lightly downstairs, and hearing some muzzling sound with an aromatic smell of meat. Her tummy aches for breakfast. Go demorgen, Mar. Her parents responded to her good morning back with their former language of Dutch she gave in the dining room, but before she can join her father who's sitting and reading the newspaper. She heads to the bathroom to clean herself up and ready to go next. Looking at herself in the mirror, a reflection of her short ginger-colored untidy hair and unenthusiastic blue eyes wears over her, and she knows just what to do with it. A lotion of shampoo just a third the size of her hand for the hair, body soap for scrubbing from neck to legs, brushing her teeth with mint toothpaste, and all done. Now looking at the mirror again, she smirks at the aura she exudes like that of a prince charming. Hey, not bad. That boy's gonna be rifling up all over me when this is over. Me, genius. Me, lion. Breakfast ready. Her mother shouted from across the room. Coming, Mar. Lion yelled back. But she noticed something was lacking in preparation. Her hair. And so she took the final step by brushing her hair to the sides and pointing at herself like from the 90s badass protagonist puffing a cigar. Spoiler. Lion Arson. Hey, you sure looking fine, babe. Collapse. Exiting the bathroom and seeing her mother handing her father's plate, Lion walks to one of the seats beaming with enthusiasm. So pa, when are we going to the shopping center? R? Her father looks at her daughter who is waiting for this day to come. Spoiler. Bremer Arson. You took care of your prickly hair this early? I'll have to thank Miss Hannah for the advice she gave for my good girl. Collapse. Cute, he thought in his head. He he, be patient, honey, in an hour or two. We'll go so if you're bored at home. You can go play with your friends. Lion rubs her hand with the plate handed down to her. Oh, yes, I will, after I chow down on Mars cooking. Spoiler, Miguel Larson. Don't be too hasty, now, time isn't going anywhere, does it? Just eat slowly as always, lion dear. Collapse. The main course consists of a sandwich with two slices of cow meat, oatmeal with milk, and bread with jellies to choose from as dessert. These are the daily occurrences that the Arson family goes from day to day, and our girl here, lion, will soon be brimming with excitement when she goes upstairs again and greets her neighbor, a boy she adores from across the street. Dot. Zero. Chapter 1. Part. 2. Oh, it's the day today, buzz, the alarm, showing 07.00 a.m., 
plays the music of Blow Me Away by Breaking Benjamin on the phone next to the sleeping person, who gets up fairly quickly and stretches while keeping the alarm on. That dream again, huh? Drinking a bottle of clean water, opening the shutters and the windows, watering the potted plants nearby with a sprayer, and other mundane things while tidying up the room to make sure he's busying himself to get rid of the sleepiness. Going to the wardrobe near the exit, he looks at the mirror and sees their reflection of a blue-haired and brown-eyed boy who got his share of bedhead in the morning. Spoiler, Dennis Johansson, a, could be worse than the front neighbor. Should I change my hairstyle? I wonder collapse with the phone's alarm turned off, he slowly gets out of the room and greets his father who's cooking their share of breakfast. Dad, is mom out? His father smirks as he looks upon the sleepy head of his son now. Yep, just heard her greeting the neighbors outside. Want breakfast? Spoiler. Daniel Johansson. Ahaha, still sleepy in the morning? Just how long did you two played in the night before? Collapse. Want Tilda? The boy meekly responded as he sat his face on the table with a sound of clinging. He sees the plates served for him. Well, the bottom's up, son. The two eat in the calming atmosphere in the morning, and both of them wash the dishes on their own. I'm going in the bath first. Don't open while I'm in, Dad. As the boy locks the door to the bathroom, his further irons out the clothes their family uses for the day and the day after, in just less than two minutes. The boy got out with some sleepiness still in his eyes. I'm done, Dad. He jogs upstairs to his room while still drying his hair with a towel, and opening the wardrobe to see what kind of clothes he should wear for today's event. There are some choices of shirts and jeans and jackets he could go for, but the one he wanted is in the main event which he'll be going for today. Dot. Hope I got enough money for it. Hey, Dennis. He hears behind his back, and he unconditionally turns over at who's shouting in the morning. A girl in the house opposite of his. Come over here, let's play for a bit. Dennis waves at her back. Okay, lion, be right there in a moment. Seeing her off in the distance, he turns to face one of the many potted plants, a red tulip. Ever since it was here, never a day has been taken care of without him here and it's never watered too much nor too little. Always with the right amount, for there is a meaning behind it, which he holds dear inside his heart. After making sure the red tulip is in a fine state, he takes out whichever looks convenient for him in the wardrobe and wears them, before going downstairs and waving goodbye to his parents. Mom, Dad, I'm going over to Lion. Take care. Both of his parents said with cheerful expressions on their faces. He exits the gate which states the name of the Johansson family at the gate itself. At the time, not many vehicles pass the road, and three kids about his age are playing jump rope on the side road near her house. Yo, Dennis. Wanna play with us? Tempted. He nods with a grin as he passes the road and approaches them, standing beside a boy who also wants to jump beside him. I did about 50, you know? Aha! Let's see if we can go for a 100. Dennis nodded, and so the other two kids holding the rope started to flail it around them. While this is going on, the girl who's waiting for him, Lion, is getting impatient as she knows it doesn't take much time to get across the street, and decides to see him herself and out to the front door. Yes, I did 100. She sees the one she's waiting for, who turns out to be having fun on his own, leaving her alone and irritated. Dennis Tilda. She lets out a grumpy voice and devilish smile at them from the distance, which horrified the kids, including Dennis himself. Seems fun, huh? Dennis? Spoiler. Lion Arson. Well now, I'm sure you know what wrong you did this early in the morning. Do you know what happens to bad boys who messed with me? Collapse. The boy, getting exhausted by the aura emitted by her, stands up quickly as if death itself is staring at him. Why yeah? It sure is f fun with these gg guys, he looks behind him and unfortunately for him, those other kids are getting away from Dodge, leaving him alone with her. T time to get you inside now. Ooh, he silently accepted his fate with a meek voice, she grasps his hand and forcefully drags him to her house, and what happened inside is an hour long session of being beaten in games digitally, physically, and mentally. Yet another daily occurrence that happens, for both the Arson and Johansson family. Dot. Zero. Chapter 1. Part. 3. End. That day, the worst. Amongst the bustling crowd, inside a mall, 
A certain ginger-haired kid jogged towards someone while panting, carrying a bag, which for her reason made her smile. Dennis, the other participant is waiting for her in casual attire, listening to his music with earphones. So, lion de lion, you got whatever you needed? He takes them off his ears for better clarity of what she'll be saying. She takes in her breath as they walk and talk. And gh, mostly yeah, and it's quite heavy even for me so. Mind carrying some for me? Dennis put his hands inside his pockets while sighing, with such a gloom to his voice. Artilda, dunno, felt like I don't wanna try as he might. She always had plan B, mki then. How about I tell Auntie Joanna to back deal? He drags himself with the other load taken from Lion's hand. Dot. I haven't said it yet, no? She put a smirk, an irritating response soon to come from him. Dennis clears his throat, readying his counterattack. Ahem, yet what you'll say? I already know, cause no matter what's in the tray, it can't be lower. He feels joyful, she feels joyless. Dot. Still can't dis at all. Ain't a scent going through my heart, bruv. Covering her face from the second-hand embarrassment. Sorry, I'm so bad and all Tilda. He is accompanying him to be her bag carrier, is what he thought, slumping his shoulders as he thinks it won't be long before his arms would be sore. She however is inviting him out with the pretense of shoplifting, which is actually for the sake of progressing the affection of him towards her, a fact kept hidden from the target. Neither gathers enough attention to their surroundings, only to each and the other. Their parents had their own needs on some of the sections nearby, and this is where Lion negotiated with both parents to accompany her. To his dismay, Dennis, feeling nauseous, taps Lion's shoulders. H. Hey, Lion, sorry, but I gotta go for a bit, huh? She looks at him with a scornful look, still remembering the morning today. Sorry. He gives all of the shopping bags to her and goes out of sight in a flash, in the direction of the restroom. TCH. He got away again. The girl brought all of them with her to the seat closest to the restroom and tapped her fingers as it took quite some time for him to finish. A hooded stranger takes a seat beside her, and he gives off a terrifying stare to anyone who looks at him for even a bit. Hey, pretty girl, waiting for some? Ha! Huh? but not even he expected to taste his own medicine of being given a scornful look by her. Pissed off, he takes out a retractable blade and holds her hostage at knife point. I don't like the face you're giving, missy. He stares at her coldly while making the people around panic. Eek. In an instant, her face turns pale blue and her body shakes uncontrollably. Dennis, who just got himself off, sees that his friend is a threat from afar and runs towards them. Hey. What are you doing to her you mutt? TSK, time to bail, and I'll be taking these, if I may. The hooded guy sprinted through the crowd stealing her shopping bags, maneuvering through the obstacles and the people. Don't blame me, blame yourself for this. Thief, that guy stole something from that girl. Dot. Soon, there are noises and Dennis looks after her. Lion, think we show, but upon seeing her shocked face. He knew something was wrong. She was cheery and bright until seeing the event taking place, making her face pale and blue. Dennis, T that's I, the bag. As she isn't able to utter a comprehensive sentence, he now knows what to do with no reason to ask it. Spoiler, Lion Arson. I'm sorry, Dennis. I was supposed to. There's something I wanted to collapse. He pats her on the shoulder and takes a stance as he sets himself to a race against time. While the crowd is making noises, all there is for him is just one and only one to focus on. Phew. Dot. Wait for me. Sprinting through the crowds, our boy here is himself knowledgeable at this, passing along the crowds wherever and whenever possible to catch up, as the running man is now on sight. Dang it, looks like I won't be getting off that easily. Outside the mall. The hooded guy spotted some kids near an ice cream stand on the side of the road. Out of my way. He drops all of the bags and shoves through them all, and unknowingly scares a girl to the road when Dennis notices a car is about to hit her. Watch out. He dived towards the girl and threw her off to the side, replacing her stead as he didn't know what to do aside from that. Screech. The car braked but instead hit harder on the boy, rendering him nearly unconscious. But the damage is done his head hammering with pain, ears tingling with noise, and all he sees is the face of his beloved friend Lion, weeping and screaming at his misery, saw. Re. This is the day when everybody grieves upon his heroic acts, which stays as the worst memory for both him and her.
zero. Chapter two, part one. Counting the time. Tick, 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 tick. It always accompanies me for all the time I've been sitting my ass here, out here just getting all frisky waiting for the doctor to come by and say how's he, Dennis, is going. R. Young lion, so soon in the afternoon instead of playing with your friends, huh? Every day you came for like, what, two weeks now? The voice of reason is the doctor, towering over me two feet taller. Spoiler. Doctor, ha. Huh? What a rivet, that boy. You sure you he's normal with a lucky head regarding the lack of injuries altogether? Collapse. The thought that this whole thing might not just happen if I weren't so temperamental to that guy back in the mall. Doctor. Is he still? Oh. Don't you worry, he's doing just fine. He tries to lighten me up, as he sits while stretching his body and making some cracking noise out of him. Ha <laughs> ha. Although it did look worse than we thought it does, it's quite miraculous that he's recovering in just two weeks. So uh, how long would it take for someone to recover, doctor? I asked, since I don't know about health stuff and it kind of piqued my interest in it, too. Two months. TTTT2? Unconsciously I made a ruckus to the people around us and covered my mouth just to hide from the embarrassment. Yep, and that is if they're hit on anywhere but the head. If they do, would make you repeat a semester. So to say the least, girl, you better be grateful that he is either very lucky, very resilient, or both in this case. His unknowingly complimenting Dennis on not being left behind a semester makes my heart flutter a little bit. Happy to know we'll still be classmates after all. Yume, so can I go in now? Or, R, go ahead. Just be sure not to fiddle around with the wires and others. See you around, kid. I bow to him slightly, seeing the good doctor fades away from my sight. After school and every day whenever I can, I try to visit him once in a while, whether it be on weekdays or weekends, the times when he's not around. I just had my mind wandering everywhere, wondering when he would wake up so we could play together again. There's only me and him now and I put everything I brought with me to the nearest table to him as I take a seat in front of him. His head is bandaged around the forehead, and so is his right arm until the shoulder. I feel more and more sorry towards him. Hey, Dennis, it's me, Lion. Frankly, a behavior of mine kicked off to make me feel less guilty since I think that he might be awake but can't speak or move. Here again for the nth time. Don't know how many now. There's the wind blowing from the window, making me see the sunset from the second floor we're in. Matter of fact, there weren't any plants or pots before Dennis was here because his parents brought them for him. The nearly dry plants seem to be the green colored ones, and I advocate myself to grab a glass of water just for them. Welp, don't mind me watering the vases again. While doing so, I noticed back then that there were potted red tulip flowers. Mother said that she was very happy when further gifted this kind of flower to her, maybe because it's pretty like her. It was very common to see them back in my homeland of Dutch, and curiosity got the better of me to pick it up and check if it smells the same. Hope you don't mind if I smell this one. No, I won't. A voice like a boy beside me said that. With that said, I smelled the flower and put the pot back where it was and sit on my chair again. Right? I kinda miss seeing them uh, again. My body froze, as then I realized that this voice is no other than Dennis. Yeah? He sits there, tilting his head and waving at me. Are we at the hospital? He himself looks very exhausted and out of touch with his skin now pale and a little skinny, unenthusiastic as always. Spoiler. Dennis Johansson. Uck, my hair tilde. How long was I out for? I could use a drink or two right now. I'm parched as hell. Man collapse. His bickering. I ignored them. Approaching him. And pulled his cheeks. Yum. Uh, to the sides. Rotating. And pulling them I did. Lion. It hurts. Stop tilde. I then stopped checking if he is real. I then did one more thing before judging that this is not a dream. Hugging. Dennis? Yeah? You are Dennis, right? I guess I am. What if you're not? It wouldn't be fun. Goad. More. General. Gordon Morgan? No 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 no. Think that's not it. Isn't it the afternoon? Anyway, it was then that I clenched my grip on him, and felt some water flowing around my eyes. Dennis. Dennis. I didn't care about the voice I was making or the face I was putting on. All I know is that I am very glad for him to be alive with me. Dot. Zero. Chapter 2, Part 2, Recounting Old Times After getting myself to calm down, Dennis asked for my help to guide him by the shoulder to the bathroom and sighed. 
You sure you can do it yourself? Yes, Lion, I have my other hand for that. He sounded a little mad with me wanting to look at him inside. But like, won't you feel tired to stand by yourself? I'm fine. Now get out, Yume. Can you wipe yourself? I will not let you see me naked. Get out. With a bang and a clack. It seems that I can't make myself useful for him at some point. Just want to be helpful, that's all. Maybe. But I do know what I can do for him now. Preparing the meals and drinks I brought from home for when he wakes up. I raise one of the lunch boxes to the table near the bed and open to see its contents. Slices of bread, chocolate and peanut butter, butter knife, and cheese and green milk is all there is but it's better than having nothing. I begin by spreading chocolate to a half of the bread and peanut butter for the other half of the inside bread, and make them as their own bread. Same goes for the cheese and creamed milk. Pulling out another of the lunch boxes which contains meat for the breads, eggs on toasts, tomatoes and other vegetables to make a sandwich. Lion, I'm done. Can you help me get back to the bed? In a moment. I finish what I'm making and walk over to Dennis as he unlocks the door and let me assist him to his bed. Oh. Are these from Auntie Meg? My mother's name, Miguel is shortened to be called Meg. Mother herself asked Dennis to call her that. No, I prepared them at home. Huh, you sure you're not doing this just to skip classes? Huh, just because I'm second place from you, doesn't mean I'm not studying. Good, good, cause I don't want you to be like how when we first met. It surprises me to be told that he doesn't forget about when I first moved over. You still remember? From you being shy? To wanting to chase me like a cheetah. Yeah, the memories coming back to me hits me from the embarrassment I was back then. Ugh, he giggled over my reaction and that makes me a little relieved to know we're still able to laugh at each other. Well, I don't know what made you move over back then and I still don't now, but I don't want you to get sad because of it. I hope. I look down to the floor as for the sad things that made us go to this town. Don't want to tell why but, thanks for being my first friend after moving here. But if there's a good thing that came out of it, it's meeting him. Yeah, don't want to ruin that happy smile of yours. Spoiler, Dennis Johansson. Hey dude, what's up? I know I've been out for however many days and all, but take a picture, it'll last longer. Collapse. At that moment, my heart stopped beating for a second and time feels so slow as I see him smiling, despite the pain he's having, but the next second had him staring at the ceilings before having his face bright red. Ah. AA and dad also said that that's what friends are for. I think. Yeah, definitely. Not able to hold it in anymore. I burst out laughing from how dynamics his expressions are from serious to bashful. Ah, you silly. I guess your head is screwed a little inside. Well sorry for being a silly willy tilde. He grumbled as he grabbed one of the sandwiches I made. Secretly, I responded to him in my heart. Yeah. My lovely silly willy tilde. We talk for quite a bit of time about what happened when he was in the hospital, like how the classes in our high school are doing, what homeworks he's missing on, and others. With the handicap his dominant right hand is having, I have a plan on what to bring for him next time. But for now, let me enjoy this moment with you. Dean Tilda. Dot. Zero. Chapter 2. Part. Dot 3. Lots of catching up. You. Two weeks. That's how long I've been in the hospital. Aid of the nurses and the doctor who checks up on me and especially Lion. I'm slowly starting to feel back my body after it being numb for the last two days. Now, Lion does have to go to school and I asked for her to let me borrow her notes later on, and to let my parents know I'm awake and visit me sometimes. NGH, my head. It feels like my brain is being hammered every once in a while. Dislike is a rather polite tone for this pain, so let's go with condemnation. Yes, I condemn that guy that made me like this, for he shoved that little girl which made me have to sacrifice myself. I don't know what would happen if I were to be visited by the people who are in the car that hit me, and I'd rather not meet them in my current condition. G-H-H. I should ask for some painkillers after this. The door opens as I'm trying to hide away the pain. And there's the doctor now checking the blood bag and equipment near me. So kid, how are you doing? Spoiler, doctor. Don't be too rash if you need to walk, kid. You're still recovering. Collapse. I'd like to have some painkillers, sir. Migraine? Yes, I think. I do know it hurts real bad like being hammered down on all of my head. <laughs> I'll make sure to bring some. Anything else? There's a feeling that I'd be berated if I say to get my injured right hand recovered magically. So I just think of something simple, 
I sure would like for my parents to visit me. Ah, that reminds me. There's some people out there who want to say their condolences to you. With that said, there's a possibility that it's my family or lions or anyone from our neighborhood. But I don't like to think it's from the one that transported me to the hospital bed. You, do they go by the name Arson or Joe Anson family? The Arson's family head and his wife, I presume. Seeing as they both have characteristics that are passed down to the lion girl you've been hanging out with recently. Should I let them in now? Or do you still need some time alone? While I'm a bit concerned that if we were to have a talk disrupted by my migraine, I'd rather not daydream and count each time the clock ticks. No, it's fine sir. I don't mind them being here. Heck, I would like some company from them instead of just lion. Ha <laughs> ha, you sure are loved by everyone then, eh? I'll be going then, you take care of yourself, kid. As soon as he said that. There's noise outside the room and I can vaguely recognize it's Uncle Bremer sounded worried about me. R. Dennis boy, despite having a body riddled with fat that only enhances the vibe of him being a friendly bear and I sure feel at ease with him here. I hope Prince Lion didn't annoy you in here. Dear Tilda, and there's Aunt Miguel with a cold or if it is definitely passed to Lion. Honey, how can you say that? She practiced making lunchbox for him every day after that day. His cheeks are pinched with her mildly sharp fingernails. Or, oh, or, oh, or, oh, or, oh. I'm sorry, Meg. Sorry. I can't help but giggle at their light hearted bickering. Ah ha ha. So, what brings you two here today? Auntie Meg and Uncle Brem. Both of them look at each other with sincerity, and Uncle Brem clears his throat. Ahem. Firstly, we are sorry to hear that you were hospitalized for her sake, and we sincerely would like to thank you for saving her as her parents. Spoiler. Bremer arson. Ha. How do I even begin to make amends to you? Dennis boy, I'm so sorry that it has gone this way. I thought you two will have a great time together when we left you two alone back then. Collapse. I know that this is to be expected since their daughter are precious to them both as she is the only child to them. Same as me the only child to my family, so I can sympathize with them. It's alright. You two don't need to feel anything about it. I'd protect her myself without being asked. Anyways, Aunt Miguel seems to feel sorry with her teary eyes and Uncle Bremer is joining her too. Oh, Dennis. You're so kind and mature for a young guy. Thank you. Spoiler. Miguel Larson. Oh, you poor boy. I'm sorry that you had to be like this for our lion collapse. Like I said, you too. Don't feel bad about it. I made the choice on my own. So, does my family have anything from me? Uncle Brem? After consoling her wife's emotion, he starts to clear his throat once again. Yes, right, Yum. So, it's sad to say that your parents won't be here until tomorrow because your mother's going to have a conference at her workplace, so she wants us to bring this bag for you. He gives a bag which contains some snacks, books, and letters. Seems to be too many for just either of our family. Is there someone else giving these? Aunt Miguel served bunny-shaped apple slices at a plate and she asked for me to open my mouth to eat one, and so I let her bring it to my mouth. Your dear friends from school and near your home gave these and requested to know for you get well soon at your family's house just this morning. Ha! Huh. I'll have to thank them directly when this is over. Also thanks for visiting me, aunt and uncle. No, thank you. They smiled at me as Aunt Miguel started to peel some apples and feed me some more. As the wind breezes through the window in the afternoon, I am hearing someone running through the hallways. The door opens to reveal Lion wearing a backpack, and she seems to be enthusiastic to see her parents with me. R. Dennis. You good, mate? Spoiler. Lion Arson. R. Ma. Pa. What am I missing on about when I'm not around here? Collapse. I responded to her back with a wave. My buttage, if that's what you meant with good, despite the impolite joke, both her parents laughed at my response. So what's with the big bag? R, tomorrow's Saturday, so I thought why not stay for the night here while we both study? Both her parents said that they have to go back home, which kind of saddens me but at least I have their daughter accompanying me. You sure you're not saying that just to play games with me all night long? Her eyes shifted to the side and the awkward silence means I'm correct. Well. I do got bored just sleeping so, I hope you'll go easy with me now. Her mood lights up when I told myself I was bored, and she opened her bags to bring out hers and surprisingly my phone which I thought was broken back then. I'm up for a game of clashing clans. You? 
Most of the games I can be confident to play now are the ones easy to control with one hand, and she recommended just the right one for me. Hey, bring it. For some reason, I felt like some eyes are looking at us from outside, and there's both Aunt Miguel and Uncle Bremer grinning while watching us. But I don't really want to know why that is. My focus now is to spend my time with Lion, since I have nothing better to do than lay in bed, so I do appreciate her from the bottom of my heart to make time to visit me these days. I hope I can get better so we can go play like always with everyone. I'm also missing out on my friends around town. I'll have to catch up with the studies, that's for sure, and I can trust Lion to provide me with her assistance tonight. I just hope it doesn't go awry with me being one-handed for the time being. Dot. Zero. Chapter 2. Part.4. Doing catch-ups for you. Next. Despite the ever-expanding dreamy vista where the leaves are red and the sun is setting down yet the background after blurs, it's lukewarm at most, but it's warmer when beside the one I'm spending my time with. Hey, Lion, do you miss home? Dennis asked me when we were just getting to know each other. Spoiler. Dennis Johansson, always wondered how it looks like. Do you think it's more beautiful than here? Collapse. It felt like this has been on my mind for far too long for me to remember. I miss my grandpa and grandma. Oh? What are they like? Do they bake you cookies? He sat down even though that'll dirty his shorts. I reminisce about the happy days when I was taken care of by my grandparents on the weekdays, as my family had a kind of schedule for who's taking care of me on the weekdays and weekends. <laughs> yeah. They taste like chocolate chips around here but crunchier and filled with more chocolates. He starts to pick interest in hearing me out when he slouches down to the ground more awesome than mom's cookies? Oh, you have no idea how delicious grandma's cookies are Tilda. Talking about the topics of my grandparents back in Amsterdam makes me feel a longing to visit them when the day comes that I am mature enough to go on my own. But the environment around me said otherwise, with unpleasant white noises and flickering buildings suddenly coming out of thin air. D. Dennis, where are you? The cold air in the back alley I am now at chokes my neck with no one I'm familiar with around. You seem lost, girl. Should have been around your parents. My heart pounds rapidly with each passing second as the sight brings me back to an unpleasant memory I'd rather keep locked away forever. The image of a hand and a blade reaching out for me. Blame yourself for this. No, buzz. The alarm plays out fireflies by Owl City in the morning showing 7 in the a.m. as I wipe the cold sweat accumulated around my head. I should switch to another music later. How many days have it been since Dennis was hospitalized? Two weeks? Three? Don't know. What I do know is that it's boring without him here. I mean, he is the one I always hang out with. So I don't know what to do with all these games and comic books I have in my room when he's the one I always talk about with. Ha. Huh. This ain't how I'd be wishing to wake up every now and then, opening the windows, I can see Dennis' windows aren't open, empty with nobody inside of it aside from Auntie Joanna who cleans his room at times. Not as enthusiastically, I made my bed and tidy my room for a bit before going downstairs, seeing Mama tying Papa's necktie before he goes to work. Ah, our young prince is up. How are you feeling, sweetie? Ha H. I'm going to get myself ready for school. Degradingly I said to them while heading to the bathroom. The passage of time gone by rather quickly when you had nothing in your mind to focus on, from how I just realized how fast I cleaned myself, done finishing my looks, at breakfast that Mama handed to me, wearing my comfortable attire for school, with cool looking jacket while wearing my bag and my wrist watch, and now standing on the side of the road as I am to ride my bike, while there is the yellow painted school bus not far off from where I am. I still favor going on my own terms, even if Dennis or the others is in there as feeling the morning breeze is truly something I enjoy doing daily. By this time, Dennis would have gotten his bike out and ride alongside me on the side road to school, which reminds me, he's got a lot of materials behind schedule on about from the high school we're enrolling at even if he's sickly in bed, thought I have that already planned out for him in every class I'm in. Arriving at the space for parking bikes, I lock mine with a bike lock before heading inside. Looking at my watch, it is 7.45, only 15 minutes earlier before the class begins. E, Lion, you okay, dude? While walking along the hallways, I meet one of my brown-skinned guy a friend with brown dreadlock hair, Martin, greeting at me. Homie's still not up from his bed, man. Spoiler, Martin, 
I know I'm not to speak but, you look like a dead man walking, my dude, you should see and fix yourself in the mirror collapse. I shrug as I am approaching my locker on the hallways assigned lion arson, class 2 -er. Nope, it's only about two weeks or so. And doctor said that's the best result given that others had it worse and longer than he did. Martin goes to his locker and comes over to me quickly in a matter of seconds. Like he doesn't see fit in it. Dang, he a tank or something with that speeding recovery? E, wonder if I can come with you when going to visit him again. Got something cooked up for him. You know what I'm saying? The word cook from Martin usually means one thing to note about, they're mostly perverted books or weird toys like a gun that shoots out the white flag as a joke. Sure sure, whatever kind of beef you got with him, just make sure I don't see adult women magazine. The awkward lack of response he gives only strengthens my suspicion of him. Welp, back to class. See you later today, lion, peace. I waved back to him before we went our own separate ways. T Peace, Martin. Despite saying that, me and Martin are only separated by the seat we're sitting at which he's at the back with other boys while I'm sitting at the front with Dennis at my right, putting my bag on my seat for a bit while holding a device that records voices, for both mine and Dennis sake as I'm a bit forgetful and can't explain things the way I imagined them inside my head. Ring. As the students walk in with the bell ringing. I turned the device on and walked to my seat, putting my books and pens on the table. Good morning, class. There enters the math teacher. One of the classes I'm not fond of. Good morning, Mr. Henderson. We all greeted him back. As always, raise your hands when I call out your names. From then on, everybody answered to the teacher's calling, aside from one. The mood is rather drab for me, because even when I have friends here, almost everyone misses him too. You can say he's the class icon, to say the least. And the lack of his present, the calm yet cheerful attitude he's always giving to every class he's in. It's taking a toll on us all. And so goes the lackluster hours of school with the absence of Dennis, the class icon, before the day ends with me going to the hospital with Martin for a change. Dot. Zero.